Good morning, I'm Matt. And I'm Randy. And you just tuned in to the Morning Devotion. We're here to encourage you through the Word so that you might be strong, strong in, in the faith, faith and live victoriously in Christ. in Christ. Amen. Amen. It's about His Word. That's where we have the victory, is being in Christ. Amen. Amen. This is a continuation of... What I've been doing as far as worship under persecution, it may seem like a different ending to it, but I think it puts it all together as to how does this work? I mean, how can we stand strong? So, here we go. Jesus is the answer. You're right. I said, how can we stand strong? And my grandson just whispered in my ear, Jesus. And he is correct. So, we're going to be in Romans 6. This is Paul. You going to read it, Paul? I'm trying to get to it. I'm navigating in Bible that I have not used for 30-something years. Good morning. Okay, here we go. Where are we at? Romans 6. Mm -hmm. Romans 6. All right, let me close that down. I think everybody's sleeping in this morning. <laughs> It's okay. Whenever you watch this, it may it bless you. And we have an open up and white prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for this day that you've given us. It's Saturday, Lord. Father, I pray that you would bless those that are listening, God, with your word, whether it's now, in the afternoon, in the evening, or much later. Whatever time it is, Lord, your word is relevant no matter what. And I thank you, Lord, for the encouragement that your word provides for us. Amen. Encourage your people. Strengthen them in the faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I can keep my eyes closed. <laughs> That's okay. I don't know where you're at. You're going to read six. I, I, the whole chapter? Yeah. At least up to 14. I only preach for like three or four okay. weeks on well, chapter, <laughs> chapter six, and she's going to fit it into a 10-minute segment. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, okay, I'm going to read it. Here. Yeah, you're going to read it. Okay. My eyes are, what are shall watering. we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in newness of life. Praise Amen. God. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You know, if we say, when we're baptized, that just represents us, our body being buried with Christ. And then we have new life, the resurrection that comes up. Because he was resurrected, we know that in Christ we're resurrected. And it goes on, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is free from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead, dieth no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead and did un indeed unto sin but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies. You notice that word let. It's something that we can allow it to do it or not to do it. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that ye should obey in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. I'm going to read something that um, I found. I studied a little bit about, uh, a gentleman did a study on 
A.W. Tozer, and he wrote a few things that he got from that. Um, Bob Boner is the gentleman. And I'm going to... This, it's, this is mixed parts of his and parts of mine. It says, Only God exists without rival, and only God possesses the right and authority to do whatever he wishes. Only God is fully wise and knows everything such that he would never do anything which could entrap him. Only God. God is truly sovereign and can do absolutely whatever he pleases. God does offer the Christian freedom, but it is a different type of freedom. Freedom. It is not the freedom to choose to do just whatever you want, but the freedom to choose to do what you know is right and to receive his power and the ability to pull it off. You know, the world likes to think freedom as, oh, you can do anything you want. It doesn't matter. No, freedom that Christ gives us it gives us the power to do what's right. I mean, because the whole point is to be in right relationship with God. Because that's where we know we have true peace. It says, for instance, uh, actually I was going to skip that one. But he says, you know, if, oh, I'm going to read it. For instance, let's say you are hooked on gambling. It has become an addiction. You know it's wrong to be risking what little income you have on a bet. But when someone challenges you with a hundred dollar wager as to who will win a game, you just can't help yourself. You make the bet, maybe lose and then feel guilty because you knew better. Freedom is the ability to stop betting. Because you know it's wrong and you are better. Freedom is the ability to stop betting because you know it's wrong and you are uh, sorry you know it's wrong and you are addicted freedom is the ability to live responsibly while every other voice in the world cries out that you need to live selfishly and look out for number one so the world wants you to think that but God is saying you know what no you do what's right and you're going to feel a freedom now in ourselves in the natural we can't but through Christ yes we can it says when Jesus Christ enters our life and changes our nature, he gives us his very life, his very power, and enablement to refrain from doing those things we know are harmful, but are impossible to resist. We don't ever have to allow sin to control our lives again. And that is the very point of what the Spirit of God teaches in Paul's letter to the Romans. You know, Listen to what it said again in verses 12. It said, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The choice is ours. Through Christ we have the strength. In the first half of that, for sin shall have... I'm sorry, I have to read 14, which I have not read yet. 14 says this. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For you are not under the law, but under grace. I'm going to go ahead and read 15. It says, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You are the servant to whatever you yield yourself to. Um, you can be a servant to sin, or you can be a servant to the Lord and live in the freedom and the liberty of Christ. Um, continuing here, it says, Paul announces the change in sovereign rules in our lives. For he's saying, for sin shall not have dominion over you. It says, 
He says that sin shall not be a master over you. Sin once ruled over us before Christ rescued us from its mastery. But now you no longer have to submit to every sinful temptation that confronts you. Someone else is master now, and that someone is Jesus. Whereas sin is influenced by Satan, Satan was our master when we were sinning. Satan is who you yield to when you decide to sin. It says, and when Satan rules, he's ruling because of hate for us. He desires to destroy you. He desires to separate you from God. He desires to steal your joy. He gives you a false hope. And then at the end, he's going to yank it. That's what sin does in our lives. But when we yield ourselves to the Lord, that story is different. Because in Christ, we have life more abundant. There's a joy. There's a peace. You become in communion with the Lord God Almighty, your creator who loves you. He loves you so much that he has sent Jesus Christ, his son, to die for you, to take on all your sin. But then he rose again so that you know that in Christ, even though things may look bad here, even though you may be going through rough times, resurrection is coming. Resurrection is coming. The day is coming when the Lord is going to take us home and all these things, all these troubles will be gone. But while we're here, we have to make a choice who we're going to yield ourselves to. It goes on and this says in the second part of Romans 6 14 it says for you are not under the law but under grace the second four in the second half of verse 14 announces the resulting change in condition since we became a Christian with a new master when that happens we are no longer a slave to sin we are now under grace it goes on and says what not being under the law but grace means is that we no longer need to fear the tyranny of a bunch of rules and orders and perform in such a way to be granted enjoyment of God's acceptance, approval, and love. Instead, we are now living under the grace of a loving relationship with God. Because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, he took the punishment for our sin only because of his work on behalf of those who put their confidence in him are we able to stand strong. We can add nothing. There is nothing we can do to make God loves us more. You see, the price has been paid. Jesus paid the price for our sin. There is not enough good works that we can do to earn us a better position with God. He loves us. That's it. We were created in His image. You know, a parent that is a good parent loves all their kids equal. Each one has their own little different niche. Each one has their own different personality. Each one is called to something different, but he loves all of them. And God the Father loves us. There's nothing that child can do to earn his way into the family. He was born into the family. Jesus Christ has made it so that we can become the sons of God. Amen. We are now in that tight relationship with the Lord as our Heavenly Father. And we have to remember that. Because you see, the enemy will come and try to deceive you and tell you, oh no, you're not good enough. you got to do this or that. No. We have to just love the Lord. Our position with Him 
is dependent on what Christ did, not on what we did. And because we love the Lord, we do the things that are right. We know that it says in 1 Corinthians 10.13, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape, that you may be able to endure it. You know, those are promises from the Lord. Those are things the Lord says. You know, we have brothers and sisters in Christ in other nations that have to resist temptation to be angry. They have to resist the temptation to want to take vengeance against those who persecute them. Those are all things that they have to deal with. But through the freedom they have in Christ, they are able to do that. They are able to sing a song in the midst of their trials. We have victory in Christ. We have a choice to make. We're going to follow Jesus? Or are we going to follow the ways of the world? Are we going to follow our flesh? we got to know sin leads to destruction. Sin leads to death. But in Jesus Christ, we have life and we have a life more abundantly. We may go through trials here, but boy, the price is worth it. For we have such awesome things ahead in glory. We have wonderful things ahead. You know, I know in my life, before I gave my life to Christ, I was looking, looking for a way to to fill gaps that were in my life that I didn't realize were there. But the only way that you can truly fill those gaps is when Christ comes into your life. Because you see, we all seek acceptance, but the acceptance that we seek can only be filled through God the Father, our Creator. He made us special. He made us in His image. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, there was separation between them and God. But God promised, no, 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 sweetheart. God promised that He would make a way for that to be corrected. And through Jesus Christ, that was done. So, I ask you to stand strong. S submit yourself to God. Yield yourself to the Lord, rather to, to the th sins of this world. You know, our nation um, is in a tough, tough situation because for too long we've been yielding to everything but God. Somebody sent me a prayer for Ann Graham Lotz. I'm going to read just a part of it okay. because I think it goes with this. Here we go. It says, As we turn to you, we acknowledge that we are established as one nation under God. We have not pledged in God we trust. Excuse me. Have we not pledged in God we trust? Yet we find ourselves constantly bombarded with the shrills of voices of those who dis demand we distance ourselves from you. They say that you are just one of many gods, if you are a god at all. They warn that we cannot risk offending each other by calling on your name. Jesus, we hear the enemy insinuating that you are not fixing this because you can't fix it, that you are somehow outdated, irrelevant. Our faith is being assaulted. It seems obvious. The root of our national, national problems is sin. Rebellion against you. Defiance of you. And so our spirits rise up within us. 
and throw off the smothering cloak of spiritual oppression and political correctness. We shout your name. You are Yahweh Jehovah, the personal God from John 20:28. 20, the great I am, the eternal God, John 8, 58. The almighty, the powerful God, Matthew 28, 18. You are Jesus, Savior, Emmanuel, Matthew 1, 23. God with us, never to leave or forsake us. Your power has not been diluted or depleted over the ages. You are just as powerful, just as much in authority as you were in creation in the deliverance of your people from Egypt and in the parting of the Red Sea. You are the one who sends down the fire, Second Chronicles 7, 1, who fells the giants, 1 Samuel 17, 1 through 50, who makes wars to see, Psalms 46, 9, who raises the dead, 2 Corinthians 4, 1 through 17, and Luke 7, 1, Ephesians 1, 17. As we turn to you, we choose to place our trust in you. I pledge to place my trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, in God the Father. I pray that you make the same choice because you see, the only thing that can change a nation is if the people's hearts are changed toward the Lord because a nation is just this big blob. God wants a personal relationship with each one of us. That's what He desires. He made a way. Accept His love. Accept His mercy, His grace. Like I usually say, you may fall down, but He'll help pick you up. You know, you may take three steps forward and fall backwards too, but you're still one step ahead. Keep going. Don't allow the enemy to, to stop you. Now, I'm going to go back to the song of that gentleman that was murdered him and his family for standing up for Christ and as they were killing his children and then killed his wife and finally he had to make the last say so the Holy Spirit put the words of the song I have decided to follow Jesus so I want to end with that make that choice to follow Jesus no matter what I pray that as a nation we are now going to make that choice. As God's people, you see, the church is supposed to be like a thermostat. We're supposed to set the, the, the mood for the room, the temperature for the room, for wherever we're at. But I think what's happened is the thermostat hasn't been con connected to the power source. It hasn't been connected to the source that it needs to be the thermostat. So it's been a broken thermostat in the United States of America. I pray that we reconnect to our power source and that's God the Father through Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven by which man must be saved but through Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So join me if you know these words in this song as we close. I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back no turning back Though no one joins me, still I will follow. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. Though no one joins me, still I will follow. No turning back. No turning back The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me The world behind me The cross before me The world 
behind me, no turning back, no turning back. The cross before you, the symbol of the victory that you have in Jesus Christ.